And with just days until he leaves his seat in Congress, Representative Mike Gallagher is shedding some light on his resignation. Now, Gallagher announced in February that he would not be seeking re-election. Then in March, he said he would be resigning his seat effective April 19th. Fox 11's Emily Matesik has more on what Gallagher said today as he prepares to leave office. In one of his last acts in Congress, Mike Gallagher from Wisconsin's 8th District chaired a House Select Committee hearing on China's possible connection to fentanyl overdoses in the U.S. After the hearing, Gallagher spoke with a couple of reporters about the hearing and the end of his time in Congress. This is more just me wanting to prioritize being with my family and, um, you know, who I signed up for the death threats and the late night swatting, but, but they did not. And for a young family, I would say this, this job is really hard. Fox 11 reached out to Gallagher's office about his comments on death threats and late night swatting calls. It's unclear if any specific incident led to his early resignation. But we were able to confirm through the Brown County Sheriff's Office, which patrols Alloway where Gallagher lives, a case number was assigned late last year to a swatting incident related to Gallagher. Local authorities, I'm told, reached out to U.S. Capitol Police about the incident. Fox 11 learned in January the investigation into the swatting calls was handed over to federal authorities including Capitol Police, the FBI and the United States Secret Service. A spokeswoman for the FBI in Milwaukee tells us U.S. Capitol Police is leading the investigation. In a statement to Fox 11, Capitol Police said, Anytime a member of Congress is the victim of a swatting incident, we work closely with our local and federal law enforcement partners. To protect the ongoing investigations and to minimize the risk of copycats, we cannot provide more details at this time. In Green Bay, Emily Matesic, Fox 11 News. Gallagher's last day in office is this Friday. He still has not confirmed his post-Congress plans, but he told reporters today he and his family do plan to stay in the Green Bay area. Is part of why you're leaving that you could get more done in the private sector? The reason I ask now is because I, a lot of these parents are so frustrated that nothing has been really done. I mean, people have died in, during the course of this hearing. Yeah. What's your level of confidence yeah. that anything will come from this hearing? Do you think you can still make a difference once Friday's over? Well, I hope so. I mean, I, you know, I, my job may change, but my mission will remain the same, which is to uh, defend America from the many enemies that we face that are trying to destroy us, foremost among the Chinese Communist Party. And I've always had in mind that Congress shouldn't be a career. Um, and uh, I've always, you know, wanted to return uh, to private life but that I mean so I'll, I'll look for a way to do that um, but this is more just me wanting to prioritize being with my family and um, you know who I signed up for the death threats and the late night swatting but but they did not and, and for a young family I would say this this job is really hard uh, so what's your level of confidence that once you're gone Congress can act on, on fentanyl legislation, especially in an election year, that that's something for these parents will actually get done? Uh, well, I'm hoping that our report uh, generates um, energy for, for action. Uh, this report is historic in showing the role that the government in China, the regime, is playing in subsidizing the export of lethal chemicals for which there are no legitimate uses, uh, as our experts testify to. And then we outline some common sense things we can do to actually get after it. Now, obviously, everything gets harder as you're in an election year. Um, you know, this, this week we're going to be voting on what could be the last major bills uh, of this Congress. But we're hoping, given the bipartisan nature of the report, I think the findings are too um, important to ignore. And, um, and so we're hoping it spurs action, if not in this Congress, in a, in a subsequent Congress. Do you think that China has been acting in good faith in terms of um, dealing with this issue? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, as I think our, w our witnesses testified to uh, today, they're not acting in good faith. Clearly, when you have the most sophisticated surveillance regime in human history, they could take action to shut down the websites that our investigation uh, went into, to shut down the, the traffickers. But in many cases, you have uh, government ownership of uh, the fentanyl precursor producers, or you have, you know, government prisons owning a stake uh, in it. And as the ranking member, I think, um, very um, smartly highlighted, uh, we've had tens of thousands of deaths from fentanyl here in America, but zero 
in China. That just proves they could be doing more, but they're not. You know, I was talking about Chinese biotech uh, tech company. Um, so you've called, been urging Biden administration to call out the biotech company by, uh, run by Chinese media, a Chin Chinese company called Wuxi Aptech. Why do you think this company is specifically raised your concern? Uh, well, my primary concern is with BGI. Um, and just given BGI's role in collecting DNA, um, its role in abetting the genocide uh, in China, um, and its attempts to be the dominant biotech company in the world, I think that's very dangerous. And its connections to, to the regime. Um, Wuxi also raises concerns given its ties uh, to the CCP. Um, but here we have a perfect microcosm of how complex a relationship with China is because we have to find a way to disentangle ourselves from Chinese biotech producers over time. We can't do it instantly because we in many cases rely on those for subcomponents uh, in that area. And so it's why over a long period of time we need to both make it easier for American companies to innovate and produce and manufacture in that space while also ensuring that none of our technology is being used by companies like BGI for evil purposes. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. No, I don't know what I'm doing Thanks, next. Uh, hopefully, Green Bay is the greatest place in the world. So that's where we live. That's where our family is. And once you start having kids, you realize how great it is to be uh, near grandparents. Uh, so they're the center of gravity uh, of everything. Um, but I haven't finalized anything. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Thank you.